So briefly, we're going to introduce to you the concept of beta-lanes. Over the last hundred years, two of the major discoveries to treat major problems haven't been drugs at all. And to quote Sir William uh, Osler, who was known as one of the fathers of modern medicine, he actually was a Canadian physician, he was one of the founders of the Hop uh, John Hopkins Institute. He said that one of the duties of a physician is to educate the masses not to take medicine. And I believe that that still holds true today, that we too often reach for a drug when a natural product could do the same thing for us. Now, if it, were be po if it were possible to find a natural product that had anti-inflammatory effects and could also help with fatigue and pain, would that not be a medical breakthrough? Well, as I was preparing for this talk, I had my feet up one day and I picked up a journal. It's more of a newspaper that a lot of doctors refer to. It's called the Medical Post. And I read it. And a lot of you have taken this drug. And it's great. It's a wonderful product. I've taken it and will still will take it again if I need to and I have no other choice. But I'm just going to read a couple of things to you about what drugs can do to us. So in this journal, and this is a real article, this is not made up, it says that NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, do not treat disease or prevent its progression. They only relieve the symptoms and decrease inflammation for as long as you continue to take it. Isn't that neat? And then in the big box that says warnings, it says that this particular drug, which is a non steroidal anti-inflammatory, is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular adverse events, such as heart attack, stroke, or blood clots, and can be fatal. The risk may increase depending on how long you use it. And then it goes on to say that it can promote sodium retention, can cause high blood pressure, and make your congestive heart failure worse, and that they really haven't done any long-term studies on this product. And then one of my favorite parts about it is about the side effects, and it talks about gastritis, erosive gastritis, and dyspepsia, which occur in 25% of the patients that took it. Now, this is just an excerpt, and I'm not saying anything bad about this drug, but this is what we normally do. And we become complacent to the side effects, and we just accept them as, well, that's all we got. So that's an example of drugs. So again, I asked the question, wouldn't it be really cool, wouldn't it be really neat to have a natural product that could work as an anti-inflammatory? I picked multiple sclerosis as a disease to talk about as an example of an inflammatory disease because we don't commonly think of MS as an inflammatory disease. It's a neurologic disorder. It can have devastating uh, consequences. Uh, and it is an inflammatory disease. Now, there are genetic components, and we're maybe oversimplifying a little bit. But what it does is it attacks the myelin, and that's the protective covering of the nerves involving your brain and your spinal cord. Well, how do we treat it? You know, can't cure it. We treat it. We treat it by using two classes of drugs. One are called immunomodulating drugs. In other words, they modulate the immune system. And the other ones are anti-inflammatory. Well, the first group of drugs are designed to try to slow down the progression of the disease. They work on the immune system. They quell or, or put out the fire of inflammation. The second group of drugs are steroids. Now, not the anabolic steroids that the weightlifters use. Uh, these are anti-inflammatory steroids, some of the most powerful drugs we have on the planet. But guess what? They're only poisons with beneficial side effects. They come with a big price to pay. And that's how we treat MS. Finally, there's a group of drugs that are used to treat the symptoms, the fatigue, the spasticity, and the chronic pain that happens in MS. So I asked the question, could it be possible to find a natural product that is anti-inflammatory, that can treat pain, that can help restore energy? Wouldn't that be a medical breakthrough? We're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about oxidation and free radicals. And the first question that comes to mind is, what does this have to do with inflammation? Well, inflammation can cause free radicals. Oxidation causes free radicals. How does it do it? Because it causes inflammation. Oxidation causes damage to tissues, damage to cells. And that causes the inflammation, which then can cause free radicals. The two go hand in hand. 
Inflammation is like a fire that burns within you. Oxidation is like rust. And you've all seen it. If you've seen an apple turn brown, that's oxidation. If you've seen rust on the Tin Man, that's oxidation. Now, why are these free radicals important, and what are they? Well, free radicals are the result of this oxidation. And what happens in oxidation without boring in with chemistry is that an electron is transferred from one substance to another. When that happens, free radicals are produced, and free radicals have unpaired electrons. If you remember from high school chemistry, when electrons are paired, that molecule, ion, or substance is stable. If you have an unpaired electron, it becomes highly chemically reactive. Well, what happens in your body? Well, in your body, you have naturally occurring antioxidants that attack or prevent you from damage from these free radicals, but they can't keep up. You need to take in your diet antioxidants to help capture those free radicals. If they're left to wander through your body, a lot of things can happen. If your DNA is damaged by a free radical, it can cause cancer. If your liver is damaged by free radicals, it can potentiate the effects of alcohol and lead to cirrhosis. If you have problems in your blood vessels, you can have stroke, heart attack, or cardiac arrest, or cardiac uh, myocardial infarct, heart attack. I said that already, twice. Um, so you can see how free radicals can have damage in many different places. In fact, even in cigarette smoke, the free radicals can damage one of the enzymes in your body that protects your lungs. If it's damaged, emphysema can result. So it's no wonder that there's been so much interest to find a potent antioxidant that's effective because its benefits can really be dramatic and widespread. Okay, let's talk about arthritis. Simply put, arthro means joint, itis means inflammation. Arthritis is inflammation of your joints. But it's not one disease. It can be as many as 100 different things. Anything from a mild tendonitis to bursitis to rheumatoid arthritis, which you've all heard of, which can be very crippling, to other systemic diseases like systemic lupus that have widespread problems throughout your body, things like gout, which we don't think of as arthritis, and the commonest form, which is osteoarthritis. Inflammation is involved in all these, itis. Whether it's a cause or effect is another question. And again, a lot of people believe that it's a cause in all forms of arthritis. And what happens? You get redness, you get swelling, you get pain, and you get stiffness because of the swelling. And as a result, decreased function. So, just to make sure everybody's awake, has anybody ever had arthritis? Anybody had a joint pain? Anybody have diagnosed arthritis from a, like a real diagnosis of arthritis? So I see about half of the hands going up, and I think the other half of the people have fallen asleep, so that's okay. All right, let's talk about rheumatoid uh, osteoarthritis. And the reason this is important is because, guess what? We're pretty much all going to get it one way or another. Ken didn't allude to the fact that most people, when think of plastic surgeon, think cosmetics nip-tuck. Yes, I do that kind of work. But I spend most of my time doing reconstructive surgery. Part of that is hand surgery. So I do have a subspecialty training in hand and microsurgery. That means I treat patients with rheumatoid arthritis. I treat patients with osteoarthritis. And I know how devastating these problems can be, especially if they affect the hands. And most people don't know that the commonest joint in the body to get arthritis, in fact, is the basal joint of the thumb, the CMC joint. Well, what happens in arthritis? In rheumatoid arthritis, inflammation of the lining of the joint causes the arthritis. In osteoarthritis, it's degeneration of the cartilage. The joints wear out, they become creaky or cracky and painful when you move the joints, it's uncomfortable. As that progresses, those bones rub against each other and what happens? Guess what? Inflammation happens again. So as we all hope to achieve that healthy longevity, Guess what? Most of us are going to suffer from inflammation. And it intrigues me that there could be a natural product out there that could help protect us against what we have felt to be an inevitable cause of aging. Now, as the disease of osteoarthritis progress, you've all seen, you know, grandma with the big bony knuckles and things like that. You've seen that? That's because your body's response to that inflammation is to make more bone. And that's what happens in, in osteoarthritis. Well, how do we treat osteoarthritis? Again, no known cure. 
All we can do is we can treat the symptoms of osteoarthritis. And how do we treat that? Commonly non steroidal anti-inflammatories. And clearly, you've heard what they can do to you. There's clear warning saying you can't use them on a chronic basis. The FDA, in fact, recommends strictly against that. And personally, my mom takes Celebrex. Well, Celebrex is a non steroidal anti-inflammatory. And how does it work? It blocks one of the enzyme pathways in inflammation. And we call that the cyclooxygenase system. COX for short. And you might have heard that. Why is Celebrex a neat drug? It has fewer side effects, particularly related to the stomach and the gastrointestinal problems. But again, you can't use it chronically. Okay, I ask you another question. Could we find a natural product that does the same thing? Along come beta lanes. In the lab, if you take a tiny little amount of beta nin, which is the commonest studied beta lane, it actually inhibits the COX-2 pathway by 97%. It's amazing. I couldn't believe it when I read that journal article. But it also affects the COX-1. There's two different types of systems. So, for example, aspirin will affect both. Beta lanes also affect both. They're a partially selective COX-2 inhibitor. So, like Celebrex and like aspirin, have anti-inflammatory effects in the lab. Really neat. Now, does that mean that it's going to work in us? You can't jump from the lab and say that's definitely going to work in humans, but there was a clinical discovery done. It was an open trial where they give, gave a beet extract to a group of patients with osteoarthritis. Well, what happened? Without reviewing that study in detail, all the patients, and it was that, that was true, all the patients showed a decrease in pain and, as a side effect, had an increase in their energy levels. Pretty neat. So, is this something new that we can take a supplement, a dietary supplement, to treat a problem like arthritis? No, absolutely not. But again, it'd be really amazing if we could find a food extract that has antioxidant properties, anti inflammatory properties, treats pain, and helps with energy. 